That just looks like poppin' bees. What? What's poppin' bees? What's poppin' bees? Welcome back to Beer Sounds. <laughs> Hello, JJ, friends. Good. My so, name is Derek. Okay, so JJ. Yes. We have a couple um, Gen Z slang words for you. All right. Yeah, because I mean, the first time we ever met, we talked about a lot of slang. Yeah, we did. A Gen Z slang. Yes. You were like, what does Riz mean? And then you showed us your Riz, which was zero Riz, but it's okay. Yep, <laughs> JJ has zero Riz? Damn. <laughs> so mm. now yes. let's see if you've practiced. I don't know how many Gen Zs you talk to not that many okay well, are we have, are we some of the only gen z guys you guys are like the youngest gen z people i know i think i sort of like know kind of like middle-aged gen well, z i feel like we don't have that big of an age difference between what do you mean between us no i, I know i just yeah. mean like you two as sort of like one entity you are at like sort of the youngest end of gen z people i interact with like i feel like yeah. i interact with people who are sort of like 25 26 27 like that sort of scene of gen z but you guys are in your early 20s so this slang you you don't even hear basically. yeah well i mean you guys are like fresh out of high school so you're on the well, whoa, 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 whoa. well we graduated like four or five years ago that's still well, okay that's fresh. also also wrong it is it's been three has it been three years yeah, since okay. we graduated but i mean i graduated from high school like 20 years ago so it's like it's a pretty damn hmm. it's fresh by my standards do you think we were popular you were popular in high school. Well, do you, you think, think we were popular? I think probably. Yeah. No, we weren't. We were not. No, but you guys are very funny, right? We like, weren't we, at the time. I, no? I, I was funny, but I was too much. I was like too doing JJ, too much. Uh -huh. This guy, we would tell him to pull his butt cheeks out in math, and he would just do it. <laughs> so you, you were you were real real class clown yeah. type. I was yeah, but uh -huh. it was like too much. Uh -huh, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Well, did you get sent to the uh, the principal's office a lot? Actually, I, no, I didn't because the teachers liked me mm. most yeah. of the time. Oh, is that so? I would like low key flirt with all the teachers. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. No, like low key, I would riz my teachers because you watch. He watched a little bit of too much, like of those videos on Cornhub. No, what I would do, what I would do is I would ask the teacher like what they did that weekend, yeah. and then they would wow. waste half of the lesson. Yeah. Yes. On and we love yeah. that. Yeah. We yeah. love yeah. that. They would waste yeah. half of their lesson, right? So I just clutched for the whole class every yeah. time. I would just I, they would. You know, no, I, I know i know that type like i feel like even when i was in high school like there was that type of kid like the kid that's very disruptive but also very charismatic and funny like you can't stay mad yeah exactly yeah. and like the teachers kind of like fall for it and like you know kind of play along and you know they often kind of like have to like and like the teacher will say okay that's enough of that you know yeah. like, otherwise <laughs> it could go yeah. all day right yeah. so, do you think we would be friends in high school like if we were Ooh. in the same friends in high school yeah. i don't know like i was pretty uptight in high school so i feel oh, like oh you know what he would do i would have liked you but you wouldn't have liked <laughs> no, me. what happened was you would have wasted the teacher's time and jj would have been like okay come on let's get back to the lesson <laughs> <You forgot laughs> Give us the homework, Miss <laughs> Pattinson. Probably, probably. Like, did you, did you have you guys ever seen the show Recess, the Disney cartoon? I've never seen that no. before. Oh, well, then I can't make the reference. But uh, make it, make it anyways for the for the oh, forty I don't know. year old like, fans. There's, there's this like the three forty year old fans. <laughs> well, like there's a character in in the show Recess, Randall, and he's like this kind of like obsequious little sort of toady. Obsequious, yeah, where he like oh. sucks up to the teachers and this kind of thing, and he's always the one that's like Mrs. Finster. I think we should really be, you know, you know that kind of thing. <laughs> there's always a character oh, yeah, in the show, and so. Mean. Yeah, and people would sometimes say that I was kind of like, oh, <laughs> he was a fucking pussy. But you were, no, but I was, you were valedictorian. Huh? I was, and I was popular. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I went to a pretty small high school, but yeah, I, I feel like people liked me despite it. It was why I was talking about this with you guys earlier, right? Like, I feel like popularity in high school is not always like the way it works in Hollywood, where it's like, yeah. you know, you're very handsome, you're a jock, you mm -hmm. know, and that's what popularity is. I think that sometimes if you're a bit eccentric, you can be popular as well because you're just different and that's kind of compelling and people are attracted yeah. to things that are a little bit unusual or unconventional. And that's why I assume that you guys were popular in high school because you that have that unconventional. <laughs> I wish that. Nor well, we're popular we're, now. Yeah, we're, we're cool yeah. now. We're cool yeah. now. Hope I would like to think so. Do you think that your personalities have changed significantly oh, since yeah. high school so much. i actually was really socially anxious in high school oh yeah so like i if i had to talk to a woman mm. i would like actually sweat in my palms oh, yes. it was like really but now bad. you should see him now oh yes well well you have riz you're Rizzy. yeah you're rizzy my point was when I, it comes yeah. to when it comes to like when you need to clutch yeah so like basically i just am so much more socially comfortable mm. but, but in high school i was scared but you he was always very comfortable like the, i don't but yeah, you think you needed confidence for that yeah i don't know what i was on bro i feel like i've become less extroverted since really? like derek's gone well, you had to even out i we both just evened out as people yeah. i think yeah. how did you do academically 
Honestly, not even that bad. Really? I, I got really honor good. roll oh, in really? my last year of school. Oh, yeah, I got nice. honor roll. I tried really, really hard because that was like the only sort of validation I had. It's yeah. like, this is what my self-worth is from. School. So I would just like try so hard. And then since I didn't have like good study habits, I hit university and I was like, wait, I'm actually like stupid. Like high yeah. school was easy because mm -hmm. I, I got I got away with doing like no homework. Yeah. And then I just like failed in university. Oh. Yeah, Didn't Derek used my study notes 10 minutes before the test and then <laughs> did better than me on the test. Yeah. I was the type of guy who tried, like I actually tried really he hard, tried. but I would still fail. Mm. Like, I think something's just wrong with my brain. I was, you know, you got that high learning school, disability, bro. Yeah, in, in your <laughs> high school, did you have like a place where all the kids with mental disabilities would kind of hang out? Maybe like the severely disabled. Yeah, yeah. it was there. Really? I was there, bro. <laughs> the front of the bus. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. But I, 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 overall, I have good memories of high school. I mean, partially it's just as I get older, I just become much more nostalgic in general. And you sort of forget the kind of like harsh details, you know, the sort of teenage yeah. stress. And you just remember like, oh yeah, it was fun. And I would go in and I feel like something that I'm very kind of nostalgic about is like how structured my life was when I was younger, yes. like when I was in oh. high school, you know, you go to, it feels like it was like this long, long period of my life. But in retrospect, <clears> it's actually like a very short it's period. It's like four, of life. four or five years. Yeah. But it? it was just like, you know, every day you go and then you have classes and they tell you where to go and what to do at every given time. And then, you know, go home in the evening, you know, you get up in the morning, like just everything is just so structured. Right. And I guess that's how most people's lives are when they become adults as well, you know, because they have but jobs. But now you're a content kind of creator. But now I'm a content creator, so I live by my own schedule and my own rules. And really, in some ways, high school was like the last time that my life was hyper structured ever since. Like, cause you know, university is yeah. much less structured, yeah. you know, your classes are at random times and you have empty blocks and all this kind of thing. But maybe you would like jail. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe you I would really like jail. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I think that a lot of times we do strive for, or we, we are sort of desire like someone oh, yeah. to impose structure on our lives. Yeah. Right? I feel that. Yeah. It's like when I had everybody put like time limits on my phone Yeah, or just like, I don't know, having somebody to force you to do something really like feels good. I like that's what I miss yeah. about school too, because yeah. wake like I'll never wake up at like seven ever again in my life. I don't think. Well, yeah. I think I think that's why so many people like people our age have like depression and shit. Yeah. Because yeah. like well, in high school you go through you go through this very structured system and you're kind of not really taught how to either think for yourself you kind of just go with the flow and do yeah. what you're told, yeah. right? Yeah. And you don't really get to think for yourself. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're hit in grade 11. Like you're like only 16 years old. Like yeah. when I was 16, like I was showing my ass cheeks in class. I really did not have critical thinking skills. <laughs> and then you have to think, what am I going to do for the rest of life? Yeah. What am I like? What's my job going to be? Where am I going to go to school? Am I going to have to move away? How am I going to pay for this? Yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden you have, you're hit with all this like shit yes. that you have to take care of and you've never done that once in your life. So then you just, cr cr uh, you like crack under that pressure. Yeah. I think there's a lot of truth to that. And then you I never really had that pressure. I was, I, cr I, oh, I feel like when I was younger, I was like, damn, I need to like do shit. Really? I started work. 16? I started working when I was 15. Oh, yeah. I got my first job when I was 15 because I just felt a need to like do something. That's interesting to compare with because I've literally never felt the need to do anything. Like I could die tomorrow and be like, all right, I've done everything I needed to do. Like you feel like <laughs> if if there was no sort of external pressure on you, you would just be like laying in bed all day and just playing video games and eating chips. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Man. What Damn, game though? JJ? <laughs> what game though? Well, no, it's I, okay, that was me three months ago. Yes, yeah, okay. but now that this is really working, now for that me, I dropped out, yeah, we have to but become serious. Three yeah. months ago, yeah, I would have loved to just play Fortnite and eat Doritos. No lie, but it's 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 interesting because it's like you know people ask me. You guys asked me this earlier. It's like, what would you like? What do you do to in your free time? Like, what do you do when you're just <laughs> chilling and stuff? And it's like, I'm the kind of person where it's just like I like working. Like I like making stuff. I like writing and drawing and creating things. You know, and so it's like I'm very self-motivated in yeah. that way, in a way that a lot of other people aren't, right? Like, and, and so maybe in that respect, even though I'm sort of like nostalgic for the structured life, I've gotten to a point in my own life now where I've sort of been able to impose my own structure on myself. And thus, I never really kind of feel like that there's a danger that I'm going to decay into a state of like pure laziness and uselessness. But that's what Gen Z are called <laughs> rotting. Rotting? Yeah. Yeah. Do you oh, know what like, rotting means? No, I don't. Like today, like it's like, what'd you do today? Oh, I just rotted. Oh, yeah. That just means like you just stayed in bed and did nothing. Yeah, what, about, uh, what about goblin mode? 
What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Explain to this guy what goblin mode is. Goblin means. mode is legal. That could mean so many things. Uh-huh. Like, what con? Can I have a well, sentence? I mean, like, how is Use it- goblin mode in a sentence? No, 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 no. But it's like, how is how is rotting distinct from goblin mode? Because that's what I thought of. Like, I've always thought the goblin mode is sort of similar. It's like, oh, I'm just going to stay in bed and eat chips and be a big when slob. When I think of goblin mode, I think of me getting high, going to the gas station and eating like 30 chocolate yeah. bars. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. like, like I'm goblin. a goblin. I'm yeah. goblin. Yeah, like, yeah. or like, I'm just like, a, like, like, I'm like, like, like the, the Tolkien character, like a goblin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just being a fucking asshole. To be honest, I've never heard goblin mode. Really? Yeah. Maybe I mean, did you come up? Where did you learn goblin? I've, mode? I've heard people say that. I feel like I've heard like girls use that term a lot where it's sort of like they kind of. <laughs> The girls be goblin. Well, no, because, what? because I think like when a when a when a young woman sort of uses that term, it's kind of like I'm kind of like giving up. Like I'm consciously giving up. Like I don't care about like being presentable, being together, being like this kind <clears> of like <throat> conforming to this social expectation yeah. of like what a together woman is supposed oh. to be like. So instead, I'm just going to wear like sweatpants and just you know eat whatever I want today and you know not. Mental health. Do my hair or whatever. That's what I call a mental health. Yeah, yeah. I think there is a kind of like overlap between goblin mode and mental health day, if I'm understanding this term correctly. When I think of goblin mode, I think of like being like a degenerate. Yeah. Like I'm going to go mess with people. Yeah. Like I'm a goblin. We we goblin. That's that's sort of like like being like trollish. Every time we go to the 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 office, we goblin. Yeah, yeah. Every time we go to the office, we goblin. See, like this is this is important because this is like a distinction between the different sort of Tolkien kind of monsters, right? Whereas like the troll is, I feel like, mischievous and like you know you know lord of the rings no no, no. i don't okay. really know it either but i mean like i know these characters right yeah, yeah. i mean or at least i know like the terms right yeah and so i feel like in the popular culture we think of like a troll as being kind of like mischievous or naughty troll or like what or what i don't know if you guys have heard this expression this is like an old kind of fashioned canadian term that my mother would often use like being a shit disturber you know? oh we Ooh. know shit disturber yeah. We should bring or, that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But being like a troll is kind of like yeah, a shit disturber. Yeah. Like you're just yeah. causing trouble, right? Whereas I feel like a goblin is kind of like more self indulgent and slobby and you know. Mm. I don't know. Well, when we I think a lot of people when they say rot, it's in referral to like depression. Yeah. Like woke up, rot, like yeah. just rotting, y'all. Yeah, yeah. It's like a very it's, a, it's very visceral, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. a big log that's just kind of like worms are eating it and it's like decaying. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, JJ, we actually have uh, okay. a couple Gen Z right, right, right. words. Okay, let's, let's get okay. to it. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna quiz you and see if we know. I'll start All first. Right. Okay. What does the word lit mean? I'm starting it easy. Lit lit is lit is just like something's cool, right? It's like, like lit. It's lit. Yeah, it's it's lit. Like, oh, that's lit. lit. That's a lit outfit or whatever. So what's right? well okay, what's like a thing that could be lit? Like a video could be lit, or like a car could be lit. I guess a video I or car. Yes, it's more like atmosphere for me. Yeah. Like yeah. that concert, that Travis yeah. Scott concert, that shit was that lit. That shit was yeah. lit, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, here's the next one. Okay, next one we have. Well, we've talked about Riz, but Riz. Yeah, yeah. Riz, Riz is. Like, I'll use it in a sentence. Like, JJ has zero Riz, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, Riz is Riz is like literally short for charisma, right? So it's like, that's where no, it comes are from. Are you serious? I don't know. That's that's my understanding. Like, charisma becomes Riz, yeah. But Riz are Riz. Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's... That sounds, wouldn't make sense. But I feel like we would know that if that were true. Well, who came... I, didn't Kai Sinat come up with the term Riz? Like the streamer. Well, I just remember there was a TikTok trend. I don't know how like how, how familiar are you with TikTok trends, but like Not very. it'd be like unspoken Riz. Yeah. So the guy would go like, yeah, and like then the, the girl would walk over, and it's like yeah. unspoken Riz. Yeah. yeah. But it's the same, like, because like when a guy says to another guy, like, you have no Riz, it's like you have, you no, have no Riz, fool. Well, it's like you have no ability to kind of like attract other people, either like same sex mm-hmm. or opposite sex, right? Like you have no charisma. Like you're not a compelling figure like you have you don't sort of like exude any sort of energy that is compelling to other people this, a really this makes answer. a lot of this makes that was sense. a really good answer um, okay the next one simp simp is is easy like i feel like oh, that's really? simp is sort of like when you kind of like suck up to a person and it's not sort of reciprocated right like damn <laughs> these are progressively getting harder but you're still on top of it well i mean i feel like I mean, simp is like I know that one because like that's a term you often sort of hear in my world, right? Like in sort of social media, YouTube world, right? Really? Yeah. Because uh, like there's always a kind of parasocial person <laughs> that is like sucking up to a content creator, you know, giving them money and and you know sort of sending them fawning comments Ooh. all the time. Do people do people ever give you money? No, people don't. People like, don't simp. Okay. Me. Main <laughs> tier three sub. Well, you have fanfics, JJ. Do I? You have fan? Does JJ have fanfics? We were talking about this before. You have fanfictions, right? I, I don't think so. Or you have Foot Finder? 
Oh yeah, you have, one of those. you have your Reddit where people like send lewd photos of you. Oh, right? I'm not. No, I'm not on Foot Finder. I'm on like there's like there's this one uh, forum which I learned about from my YouTube buddy Scott Kramer, which Shout is Scott like, Kramer. Scott, Shout out Scott. Uh, he mentioned he alluded to it in one of his videos, but there's like some sort of like forum that's like popular with gay men, and they have like a thread of like the sexiest uh, pictures and content from like every kind of like male YouTuber under the sun, basically. And there is like a modest thread on me, but you know, there's like threads on, you know, Derek Gerard and all of our other friends. Does it make you feel good though? I mean, kind of, although it, it bothers me a little bit that on and in my thread, there's a lot of comments where it's like, oh yeah, he's hot, but I really hate his political opinion. So it's <laughs> oh! like, it's like he, he's good as long as he keeps his mouth shut and that kind of stuff. Right? That's so <laughs> his mouth shut. That's like, so rude. It's like, you know, like when people like put the bag over her head. Yeah. There's a tape his mouth shut. Oh yeah, my exactly, God. Right? So that's, that's a little, a uh, little off putting to me. But... Okay. The next word. Oh, hopefully you get this. Okay, this one's kind of. Okay. So like, this isn't necessarily a word, but I guess it's like an expression. Yeah. yeah. Shh. Shush. Shush. Do it. Is it sheesh? Shush. Shush. Hold on. If you were to spell it out, is it like sheesh or shush? It's S H E E E E E S H. Like sheesh. I am. I am. Un, I am completely unfamiliar with this one. My only guess could be that if it's sheesh, it's kind of like I don't know. When people say like sheesh, I don't know. I mean, people when people say sheesh in a normal, it's like how about sheesh. I, how about it's I use like, it in? A, I'll use it in a sentence. Oh my god, big brother outfit is gassy as so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just like kind of a pointless word that just kind of emphasizes what you previously said. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. It's just like a hype up. Like yeah. if if we were playing Fortnite uh -huh, right, and I just course, squad wipe. Dude, we, we, dude, dude, well, dude, we're ten minutes in, you talk about Fortnite twice now, bro. He <laughs> has a llama. Like that's on actually his true. Desk. You do have a llama. I do. I don't really know what it is, but actually, yeah. I have a vague idea of what it is. It's like an item in Fortnite, right? Like and it gives this, you good stuff. Like, like how in Mario, it's like question mark boxes in Fortnite. Yeah, it's like yeah. Pretty except much, right? if it will, it's like really rare. There's like three uh, of them on the yeah. map. So yeah. I just think it's kind of cool. It's like yeah. I like, I like objects that are like the purest version of a thing. And I feel like the Fortnite uh, llama piñata is like the purest <laughs> version of what a piñata is supposed to look like. A like you know, let me let me let me let me let me let me teach you guys like <laughs> philosophy. So oh my god! Uh, let me like, okay, okay, a, run it, run let it, me, run let it. me teach you a philosophy term. Right? Have you ever heard of something called a, like a Platonic ideal? No. No. Okay, so like there's this like you know there's the philosopher Plato, right? Oh, I, I, I <clears> rock. Yeah, I, I I used to play with Plato when I was a, a yeah, kid. Yeah, I like that cave thing yeah, that he yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. Respect. But anyway, like one one thing that's like associated with Plato is this idea of like everything in the world has like its ultimate form, like its best version of everything exists, even if it just kind of like exists in an imaginary kind of like mental state. So I kind of feel like oh, we I'm a peak. I'm oh, I'm yeah. <laughs> like I'm attracted to things that sort of like get the closest to like what I imagine the platonic ideal of a thing to be. So like that Fortnite llama piñata to me is like the platonic <laughs> the ideal, ideal of what a piñata is supposed to look like. JJ, the way your brain works, man, is fascinating. Wow. Yeah. So what would be the platonic ideal of like entertainment? Mm. Of entertainment? Yeah, I think it like depends like what type of like a campfire story or... where all the cavemen are telling like stories of ancient gods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is know. that the platonic like, ideal no i think i think that like in the modern day i think like the platonic ideal of <laughs> entertainment is probably like like just a really good movie like a, a masterpiece film right like i think and i think that a lot like of people... fist fight no starring ice cube no, no. that's a good movie y'all <laughs> like oppenheimer or something like that what? like well oppenheimer was, fine. Oppenheimer so was long. Good. it was long but it's like i think that I think that, like, for example, there's, like, this appetite for there to be, like, the perfect Hollywood movie. Like, the platonic ideal of, like, the Hollywood masterpiece. Oh, it's like the, like, uh, the, uh, Oppenheimer was, like, the white men of Avengers. Like, there were so many white famous men in that movie. <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> Did you, you liked Oppenheimer? Um, I thought it was I thought okay. Like I, I thought it... I thought that the whole Robert Downey Jr. kind of subplot felt mm -hmm. a little unnecessary. Uh -huh. Like, I feel like the film about them making the atomic bomb, like, I felt like that was a story. That was by far the best part of the movie. Yeah, and then, like, the Robert Downey Jr. part, like, even I, like a guy who understands politics pretty well, found that part, like, kind of hard to follow. Okay, so I'm know? not stupid. Yeah, no. yeah. And like, I need subtitles for movies. That movie, yeah. they talk really fast I know. about fucking and gibberish. And there's, like, fucking so much, like, Christopher Nolan's films, like, the, the audio is just everywhere. He it's does not know how sound. to mix audio yeah, very yeah. well. It's a little overbearing, I agree. So, I mean, I think it was a very, like, it was a strong movie that told 
an important story, which is how the bomb was developed and, you know, how they went and yeah. salt up the city in the middle of the desert in New Mexico and like all that. Like that's, that's fascinating. And like the guilt and, and doubt that Oppenheimer felt about his responsibility. I really like the scene where he talks to the president, you know, President Truman, who's sort of depicted as this kind of like bumpkin hick kind of guy, which he was. And <laughs> like how, bump. and like, you that's know, what you do on the toilet when you yeah. masturbate, bro. Oh God, yeah, why do you have to? I actually have to ruin this. I'm trying, <laughs> trying to make a serious point I'm here. I'm sorry. I take said, it back. You said something that sounded like something you else. You said Blumpkin. You know, no, though. I said Bumpkin. Do you, you know what a Bumpkin is? No, yeah. but do you know what a Blumpkin is? Do you know what a Blumpkin is? No, but my thing is more important to teach you than okay, the other sure, 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 Like sure, a Bumpkin sure. is like a kind of like hickish person. Like somebody who like lives in a Ooh. small town and is very sheltered. And it's like, right? I hate you people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's like the way that, that <laughs> President Truman in Oppenheimer, if you remember that scene, He's sort of so. portrayed as like a very bumpkin. He's just like this hickey politician and he doesn't really sort of think much. It's like, yep, I dropped the bomb on the Japanese mm -hmm. and that Walk shut them. them up, you know? Whereas like Oppenheimer is like, you know, this intellectual who's like spent all this time thinking of like guilt and anxiety about this bomb and how it's going to cause all this chaos in the world. And then President Truman's just like, mm, bomb, well, that's good, you know? <laughs> so, and I, think, <laughs> and I think that the film did a good job of sort of like capturing like how you have like a kind of, like scientists and intellectuals, like serious people think differently about this kind of stuff than, you know, politicians yeah. do. Even though the politicians are the ones that, you know, make the decisions of war and peace, you know, you have these scientists who actually create the weapons of war and peace. And there's kind of a disconnect between how those two groups think about this sort of thing. You think World War III is about to happen? Who no. you think, whose side are you on? Because, dude, I'm telling you right I'm, now. I'm, on, I don't, I don't, I'm on, gonna be on the winning side. I'm gonna tell you this. It. Okay, but here's my question. I'll switch All allegiances. Because right. I actually, I'm curious. All right. Let's say China, like, and Japan. Yeah. They're close to each other. They yeah. would fight. Yeah. Right? You know? Yeah. yeah. How are we going to tell who's who? What do, you, what do you mean? Like, like, okay, if I'm a Chinese general. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, okay. I'm a Chinese general. Okay. And I'm like, okay, guys, good plan. Yeah. Let's make our military uniforms the same as the Japanese. Yeah. Now what? I mean, this. I mean, now what? I know no, you're. I know you're joking, but like, this was actually like a thing that came up during World War II because you know the Chinese and the Japanese were on opposite ends of that war as yeah. well. The Chinese were our allies. The Japanese were our enemies. Really? And so yeah. And well, so it's actually Japanese kind of be fucked. And right? it's it's funny when you actually go back and like <laughs> read the media reporting and stuff about this and a lot of it is kind of like weird and racist because it's like how to tell a chinese from a japanese and like, <laughs> what well, was what was that what was like the, the well, it was, it was like all this like kind of like pseudo scientific like phrenological they eat kind sushi. of bullshit <laughs> no it was like stuff like oh like look at their face and like the jap has a face that has like this kind of shape and the chinaman has a face that has this kind of shape you know it's just like it's like all like really like racist stuff but it's like that was an issue i guess that they thought was a real thing at the time like having to sort of separate because you know they worried about like spies and yeah. you know if you're like in america and like you know there's an asian guy sitting beside you at the restaurant and you're talking about the war plans it's like is he a friend or is he a foe and so you have to kind of like come up with some sort of like racist way to identify if that person <laughs> i want i bad. need to find one of these old advertisements <laughs> and then we have to so get a japanese funny. person and then me and we need to see if people if it works well i feel not. like i mean a lot of people think Derek's Korean because he is Korean. Yeah, yeah what like, did you think I was? Did you know I was yeah. Chinese? I mean, I don't I don't think about this kind of thing, right? Because I... You don't I, see color. He doesn't see race. No, you I just... Me. Fist bump me. Fist bump me. You don't see color, <laughs> brother. <laughs> That's But that's like a bad thing to say. Did you see how like... Our premier, or our old premier, Premier Horgan, in a debate oh, a while jo ago. Jo Joe Horgan. John Horgan. John Horgan. He, he, in a debate a while ago, a political debate, he said, I don't see color, which in his That's mind, one. which in his mind was like a very progressive, enlightened thing to say. But then he had to apologize for saying that because saying that is now seen as a kind of like racist thing to say. And Which, then, like ten years, it'll be fine. Yeah, and then in ten like years, I, I feel it'll like I can't back. keep no, up because these it's days. like the the added the, the sort of the the mindset now is that by saying I don't see color, you're sort of like absolving yourself of responsibility of like inequalities and in race and this kind of thing. Where it's that like, actually makes sense. You're but supposed to be time, like, like aware of 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 color because like only by being aware of color are you aware of like the differences and you know systemic injustices and that yeah. sort of thing. Right. Well, for me, it's like if you don't see color. 
But then you walk into my house and it smells Asian. Like, aren't you going to be yeah, confused? This house smells Chinese, does <laughs> right? it not? Does it not, JJ? Be honest. I, I don't have a very good sense of smell, but... Uh, oh, I'm telling you it does. Yeah, it smells like dim sum in here. It smells like a dim well, sum Well, I mean, it's because of, like, the food and stuff, right? It's not like the people exude No, no, it's scent. the people it's they the exude. People. No, it's they the exude, sort of, bro. It's the sort of things that, like, different cultures will have in their homes create distinctive smells, yeah. you know, and then you associate that smell with the rice and all of that. What, is, is, what do you think your house smells like? My house? Yeah. It probably smells musty. A lot of people... <laughs> Musty. He you knows know musty. musty. Musty is like a normal word. That's hey, not wait, like a do you, slang do you word. Know, do you know glow up? Yeah, of course. Like a glow up is like when you were kind of like a, a dork as a, as a kid. Like we you... glue up. We did glow up. We glue up so? real yeah. bad. We glowed up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, dude, I was so ugly, big bro. Like, like, it was crazy. When I was on Hinge, when I was 19, yeah. I had like two girls message me in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Swear to God. What like I glowed up? Yeah, no, no, 100%. I was a really ugly guy back in my back in my heyday, bro. Yeah. Back in my ass cheeks day, I was just an ugly, big bro. But I was talking about like when I was nineteen. I was ugly when I was nineteen. Yeah. I wasn't oh. ugly. I think I'm like I still have improvement to do, but like I was really ugly, like like even like three months ago, bro. Yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad you're continuing to glow up. I mean, that's a very old thing as well. Like, see, like this is the thing with like younger people and and this kind of stuff is that a lot of the trends that they think of as being these like very new kind of like exciting sort of observations are very. You guys old. had them before. You well, it's like when before? okay, like here's an example. Like when I was when I was a kid, my sister. My younger sister used to watch a lot of uh, Mrs. McCullough talk shows or like, like, you know, like, oh, okay. like stuff like Jerry Springer, Jenny Jones, Sally, Jesse, Raphael, Raphael, I think her name was. Uh, these are like shows that mean nothing to you. I mean, they're yeah, I mean, Ellen DeGeneres, Ellen DeGeneres. No, this was like Jimmy pre Alan, Ellen. Like oh, these God. were like much, much sort of trashier shows, right? These were sort of like daytime talk shows that like, you know kids skipping school and unemployed housewives would sort of watch, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And like one very consistent, particular on Jenny Jones, Maury Povich was another one that's very popular, was they used to do this shtick that I remember quite liking where it would be called Geek to Chic. Where Geek to <laughs> Chic. Where it would be very corny, but it would be like they'd have, like they'd bring on some, some like a girl or guy who's like, you know, now in their like 20s or 30s or whatever, who used to like bully some kid in high school. <laughs> and then they'd say, let's bring them out now. And then they would dramatically like crash through this like old like high school photo of them looking like a dork. And then they'd burst through and they're now super hot. Damn. And they'd confront their bully and they'd be like, you used to make fun of me. <laughs> now look, look at me, me. now. I'm You'll never get a you date up. with that's me. That's good. You know? That is great television. Dude, that's actually, they should do that. That, is that would actually be television. good. Like if someone made like a show called Glow Up, like, that would be pretty. That probably one. is one, but I it would, wouldn't be like bring the bully. You know in. which yeah. show I wish was real? What? The Hunger Games. I Dude, wish the Hunger Games were real because everybody's like, "Oh, it's unethical." I would never watch that. Me personally, I would watch. I that. would pay like fifty bucks a month subscription to watch Hunger Games to and, watch people kill each other. And you know what? That, that show would no, be the best. For thing me, ever. it's not even about the killing. I would have like, we, I would be like. I would love betting on it. Like the props, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I got JJ plus three kills, bro. <laughs> <This> is, <laughs> you guys are like, that's a good KD ratio. You guys are like missing the entire like point of that show. No, the Hunger Games would be the coolest thing ever. Oh, I would look forward to it every is, year. This man. is not the message that the movie is trying to what impart. What is the message? The message of the movie. And am. No, the message of the movie is that like, wouldn't it be dystopian if sort of society decayed to such a point that people were like actively like watching people kill each other for entertainment. That would be well, the yeah. coolest the thing. The thing is, in Hunger Games, I'd be like the rich district. You know, we'd be we'd uh -huh. be nice up there, yeah, so yeah. we wouldn't be the miners. Yeah, like we would know? like we're, we live in Canada, bro. Like yeah. we would watch other countries. Too, <laughs> yeah. 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 you know what I mean. <laughs> it's distasteful. I, I've never actually, I've never seen the Hunger Games, but like oh. it's it's okay. Yeah. Catching well, fire. You, I mean, like the, the thing with the problem here's here's my my critique of the Hunger Games. Having never but you've seen never it. seen it. Okay. I know, I know, but it's like from what I understand from like other people's review of it is that like the politics of of that show like make no sense. Like there's no actual social commentary. It's just like bad people are bad good people are good and that there's kind of like no moral complexity to that world. well it's also written for teenagers yeah who like but yeah. I, I think that that's not helpful for teenagers right because i i do think that you know when like for social commentary political commentary to be useful i think it's important that it acknowledge that there's some degree of nuance to the world right and so like presumably well is there though i think so the boys I but, personally, but it's like like in, in Hunger Games time. world, like in Hunger Games world, it's just like there's like evil like rich people who are like oppressing the like the poor people for their own kind of pleasure yeah, and entertainment, yeah. right? Like there's never any sense that like their wicked government is set up in 
legitimate opposition to something that they are rightfully afraid of, right? Like President Snow and all that, like they're just kind of like bad guys. Yeah, he's just right? like a fucker. Yeah, I yeah. think from what I've seen a lot, and when I say when I've seen, I mean TikTok, but yeah, a lot like- of Gen Z people, I think there's a person for every movie that relates something to like, oh, this is a actually... This is actually anti-capitalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but this is, but this is, this is my point, time. right? Like, I, I think it's not useful for young people if they're given, like, pop culture that just presents the world in these very clear black and white, you know, moral versus immoral mm-hmm. kind of yeah, terms. Because yeah. I do think that, like, politics is not about that there's just, like, some bad people that are just doing bad things because they're bad. It's usually because they think that they're doing something that's right, but there's, like, trade-offs and that they're kind of indifferent to the suffering of some people because they're pursuing some gain for something else. I don't know. I Maybe I'm not sort of explaining this well, but I, I think that that's... I think it's important that we acknowledge that there does exist sort of nuance in politics. And a lot of times when bad things happen, it's because that there's been like a lot of sort of lead up to that, you know? Like, my brain is crumbling. No, like, <laughs> well, I'm like, trying... No, like a war, like a war breaking Ooh, like out. Like a war, shit. right? Like, like that's yeah. an example. Right? There was it's a bunch like, of little shit that went down, yeah. and then the war happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And beef. The, and like, and and there was probably like some, like you know, particularly like in a sort of like wealthy middle class society. Like, there's something that kind of like freaked out the kind of like the middle class that got them to kind of throw in their lot with like a terrible government because they were afraid of something. And perhaps they were afraid of something legitimate. Like perhaps there was actual terrorism or sort of danger that sort of threatened the middle class. And thus they voted for some terrible fascist government or something like that. Right. Wait, are we supposed to, are we supposed to talk about hunger games? Well, I mean, like, cause that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, like, bro. <laughs> like, it's like, I, I mean, maybe, maybe I should watch the show, but it's like, uh, whereas like something like, have you seen handmaid's tale? I've no. heard it's really good, but I have not watched yeah. it. Yeah, it, I feel like it's too scary for me, bro. It what? probably is too scary. <laughs> but it's like, like Handmaid's, Handmaid's Tale has like a sort of more complex yeah. kind of like social commentary, right? Where they sort of posit that there is this like sort of fascist government that has arisen in America in part because the sort of middle class Americans sort of like grew to fear the advancement of like women and minority rights, and so they kind of like swung really hard against it, right? Oh, which is damn. not it's not that like, makes sense. That's not like morally defensible. But it is a kind of like explanation of why their society works that way. Right? But why do you think Trump got elected? Well, I think Trump got elected for similar reasons, right? Yeah. It's like that there's like a certain cohort of the American middle class that kind of like fears Hate immigrant sh- people. Yeah, that. Well, I mean, <laughs> fuck them, <laughs> fuck the Mexicans. I mean, it's it's it's. I think that that's a significant part of it. But there is also like fear that like America is changing very quickly. Like yeah. America is is becoming very diverse, you know, that there is a lot of uh, expectations of tolerance that didn't exist previously, you know, like if you're a guy who's in his like 60s or 70s or something, like, and you see now that, you know, gay people are tolerated, trans people are tolerated, you know, feminism is run a podcast on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tolerated. (laughs) Well, no, it's like not even tolerated, but like socially accepted and sort of celebrated and this kind of stuff. Yeah, 50 years ago, I would not, I would suffer 50 years ago, bro. Yeah. I would get hung. But it's like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so, like, people people backlash against that kind of stuff. I don't think it's justifiable, but it, it does happen, right? Yeah. Like, And that's – politics is – that's one of the difficult things about politics is sort of, like, how – like, social change has to happen, but how do you bring the kind of, like, cautious, older, conservative middle class along with that kind of social change without freaking them out? And then making them. You have you to know, do it gently. Well, they can just die. It's my They'll first time. Be down. gentle. They with will me. die. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Let's say that again. <laughs> it's my first time. Be gentle with me. Do you? Do you guys? I'm. I'm curious though. Like as young people, like what your conception of uh, of like the past is. The past. Like as like in... like I don't know. Like in terms of like how kind of like like what do you think it was like in the 1980s or even the Ooh. 1990s? So I well I, I'm thinking. Okay, so I'm I'm a jock. Yeah. I play football. I'm white in this scenario. Okay. 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 You're a white man. Because if I'm Asian, I'm no. I'm what would you like if you? Were, what would life have been like if you were Asian? And, and here? Oh, I can. Like, yeah. I can. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna actually. No. Well, I would. I'd be wearing glasses. Yeah. Okay. And I'd be with the nerds. Yeah. And I would do the jocks' homework. Uh-huh. And then they would drive off in their red convertible. Uh-huh. And I would bike home. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And I'd be like, "Hey, mom." And then she'd be like, "Do your piano, fucking." little young one and like oh but i have to do the jocks homework uh-huh and then i'd go to school and i would have a crush on girls but they would never talk to me yeah and then 
I wouldn't get invited to parties, but when there were parties, there'd be a million people at some kid's house yes. and they would all drink and they'd be dancing and it'd be packed and there'd yes. be red solo cups. Uh-huh. And then it'd be like, no, 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 no. Bro, it was like describing his life in high school. So you still did the jocks homework in high school, bro. No. no. <laughs> what about, but no. like, what about for like minorities, uh, gay people, stuff like that? Oh. Like, do you have a sense that like life was measurably different for? It was probably fucking worse, bro. Yeah. You had to hide that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's more like being a feminine man would have just been impossible. I think that would have been really looked down upon. I think, mm. I mean, Bucky wouldn't be able to walk down the street. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you take Bucky and put him in like Florida. Could he walk down the street? No. Well, right. if he was like in Miami, I think he could. Maybe if he Ooh. was like not in like rural Florida, maybe. I was thinking actually. rural. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like Miami. I mean, like, this is the thing is like, there's so much diversity between rural and urban places, That's right? True. Like Miami, when I went to Miami, it's like one of the most like, I don't know, wild places I've ever been to in terms of, you know, very LGBT friendly, like just lots of oh, party people. Miami, we're up Miami. You would probably like, well, I mean, Miami is a very intense you place. You want to go with us? You want to go on a little We should go to Miami. JJ, we should go on like a three-way trip. Just a have like a good trip time. trip to Miami? Yeah. Get your first drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, JJ, what? So did you were... Did but you ever go to a party in high school? Yeah, of course. Did I you did. just drink water what? the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> was it anything like how I described it? No, it was like that. But I mean, like, you guys surely went to parties when you were in high school. No. no. no? I didn't go to a single fucking party, bro. JJ, I was not cool in high school, bro. Yeah, yeah. But but you're aware that, like, those things existed. Even yeah. If you weren't I would there. watch everyone's Snapchat story of them yeah. partying, and I'd be like, yeah, cool, well, guys, Friday night. But it still wasn't like the bed. movies, how they would portray it. Yeah. Right? Do you think it was similar to the movies at all? Like, how well, I mean, was? like movies always kind of play everything yeah. up like everything is more theatrical like people like they love more extreme they fight more extreme you know like just like wealth and power and success and good and evil like all these things are more extreme in movies than they are in real life and you know obviously you're trying to create captivating images so like a party becomes like a very extreme version of project a party, x right? oh yeah what is that it's like this crazy fucking movie you gotta watch it bro oh what do you think is different about how we are compared to how you were mm. well i think like the biggest difference like is is just the existence of like phones and social media yeah. like there was no like internet when i was in high school like internet like barely existed like it was like a brand new did you have thing to- yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Man, you, had to, you had to get yeah, the playboys like, I, dude i couldn't like use the internet when my parents were, like, were you using a Playboy the demon? I, I don't know what that is. You know I, what Playboy is? I know what Playboy is, but what's Playboy demon? No, oh, like, like you were, demon. oh yeah, it's just like it's just I, like like if I was eating a lot of hamburgers, yeah. I'd be a hamburger demon. Okay, so we've got like, <laughs> like we've got what, like three different like mythical like, creatures you, now: <laughs> trolls, <laughs> goblins, <laughs> demons. Like, what were you grinding back in the day? Like, what do you mean grinding? Oh, okay. So grinding is like if I st- played Fortnite for ten hours, yeah. I'd be grinding. Well, I yeah, guess I mean like grind. that's the thing. Like because there was no internet really in those days, and the internet was like really slow, and there wasn't a lot to do on it. I played a lot more video games than I do now, right? Like you I on just, the NES or like what was well, it? Well, by that time it was like probably the Nintendo sixty four would have been like the newest Ooh, you thing. Play, like, Mario. Ocarina of Time. Yeah, I played Ocarina of Time. I played no Banjo Kazooie was the game I was. Oh very my fond wait, of. JJ, you're hip, bro. You're so hip. You're pretty this, hip now. This stuff is back back in style. Yeah, you're a hip guy, bro. Yeah, because a lot of the things that people, you know, what's really in like, yeah. um, old cameras, like yeah. film cameras, yeah. vinyls. I'm, that you shit know, makes you its know, way back I think around. it was literally just because of Stranger Things. <laughs> I swear to God, Stranger Things really put a lot it of really it. brought like, like, um, what you call it? It's like a, Nostalgia. it's like a Walkman. It's like a, yeah, yeah, a yeah. Walkman. Walkman. Like yeah. those, like Stranger Things and like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, like brought yeah. back that I like, age. I swear, I like I like some of this stuff in Stranger Things because that is like when I was a kid. Like that was the. Did era you play D and D? I didn't. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I yeah, was. I would have cooked you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like no, it's like the Stranger Things. Like the vibe of Stranger Things, the atmosphere the is very nostalgic for me because like I remember some of that stuff when I was a kid, and I kind of <laughs> miss it. And I think like that's why Stranger Things is very popular with my generation is because it allows yeah. us. Did to a kinda, demogorgon like, take a kid from your school? Bro? Yeah, <laughs> demogorgon mode. sometimes. Yeah. And I would eat lots of frozen waffles and all that. So it was, uh, it's pretty, pretty sentimental. What but about like <clears> a synth? Like, synth? You, like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, synth? yeah. Like, was that really in? The, yeah, like, that was really in. You, you, like, like, what's that song? But it's like, I ran. Yeah, yeah. The, the Bush song. What is her name? Kate Bush? I don't know. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah. She was the, the musician that did that. Um, but man, I remember synth pianos like being very popular. Oh, like, yeah. 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 Stuff always Everybody comes back because right now, 
we have like a thing called Y two K. You know what that is? Yeah. Well, I mean, I know it. Wasn't Y two K when wasn't Y two K when the power was gonna go out or something? <laughs> That's very funny to me. <laughs> the show so, the power. Was want, out. Okay, hold on. I want to hear you guys describe what you think Y two K was. <laughs> okay, I think Y two K was when the monks created a calendar. No, shut up. Tell me what it really <laughs> was. No, genuinely, okay. I'm not kidding. From right. my understanding, okay. I, wow, okay. I thought that Y2K was that the monks in like Tibet created a calendar, okay. and then the calendar r- ran out of time, uh-huh. so everyone was like, oh my god, the world's going to end. How, the how did they run out of time? I don't know, they, man. They all That's died what out I thought before it was. extending And the then I remember calendar. watching the news. I was actually stressed out. Because at the time, I'm like nine years old when Y2K is yeah, happening, we right? like I was like 10. nine, t- ten. You were? When were you guys born? In 2002. Well, what in his Y two K, in my Y two K, in my Y two K, in my Y two K, Y twenty twelve. Hold on, so what? Oh, so, so, just, so then, so then, this is not. The, this is I not. I thought the power was gonna go out, what? and then I remember watching the news, and then um, I I switched to like Ontario because Ontario is five hours ahead. Yeah, and they're like, "Yo, guys, three. we're still here." Three hours ahead, they're like, okay, "Yeah, guys, is... we're still here. Everything's okay." I'm like, "Oh my god, thank god!" And then you switched to China. No, at the at the time, I hugged my best friend and yeah. I was like, "I love you so much" because I thought it was over, bro. This is so muddled <laughs> and incoherent. Based on... So that's 2012. Yeah. Yes, I remember. I was in um, I was in Hawaii, uh-huh. and there was a guy like parachuting, and I was like, "I'm fucked. That's it." Because, uh, uh, dude, if a tsunami hits Hawaii, I'm screwed. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. why would you take me to Hawaii in 2012? Why? 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 You guys you guys have, like, appropriated an important part of my generation's okay, culture. Okay, here's my answer. Into your crazy, like, know. 2012 bullshit. I kind of know. So, like, it's sort of like when all, like, the, the devices would switch from 1999 to yes. 2000. Yeah. Oh, is that what like, it is? Some, like, yes. paranoid guy made a theory that, like, when it switched, all the all the devices would crash and the planes yeah. would fall out the sky yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Who came up with that? I mean, I think it was like probably a somewhat. Li- I mean, like there's a lot of debate as to whether or not it was overblown or if the only reason why it didn't cause any problems was because we actually took it seriously as a priority. But it's true. Yeah. It's like in the, the the theory of it was that you know, sort of the primitive '90s and '80s era computers. Uh, you know, they cut a lot of corners, right? And one of the ways that they cut corners in order to make them cheaper and you know work was to not uh, make the calendars work into the 21st century so it's like they didn't program in calendars oh, that could go beyond you know dates that began oh damn i was so off yeah and so like <laughs> the the IBMs. fear, but like the fear was that what would happen is that like these computers would all crash like because they would go like you know january 31st 1999 january would, 32nd <laughs> yeah or like and it would go like you know, like it just wouldn't know yeah. what to do and it would like crash and then the planes would fall out of the sky and blah 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 blah. and so this was like a really big fear at the time and so governments and businesses spent a lot of money like reprogramming their computers and doing stuff like that in order oh. to make sure that no problems would happen. Did people actually like not go on planes around that time? Just Probably, were, yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember listening to the radio that night and they were like doing like, okay, latest updates. Uh, so far, nothing <laughs> bad has happened. Bro, but to uh, the radio. Is, is, there, anything equ- to radio? is yeah. there anything equivalent to like that like recently? I don't. I this don't. is like. Yeah, dude, my thing. No, no, no. Oh, but yeah, his thing. That's thing. Like, but that's like. like <laughs> that's Tibetan like, monks, bro. But that's like, like hocus pocus stuff. This was like a legitimate kind of like technological concern. But it's like the technology of now is just so much more sophisticated yeah. that I don't think we worry about little simple things like that but that was like it was like a big deal and people didn't know exactly what was going to happen there was i used to listen to the radio a lot you know this was what i did in high school when i would get home i would like listen to radio shows and stuff talk shows on the radio because there was no podcasts of course in those days so i'd have to listen to radio shows and there was this one sort of like somewhat kind of conspiratorial radio show that i used to listen to a lot because it was entertaining you know, in the same way that people like listen to Alex Jones or Joe. Same Rogan. way people listen to Beer Sauce. Bro. Wait, what's yeah. the Alex Jones meme that's really big and it's him yelling? Oh, the friggin' frogs gay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to the friggin' frogs gay. <laughs> yeah. But it's like I listened when I was younger, I listened to some of that kind of stuff on the radio. Yeah. I think even Alex Jones had a radio show initially before he became whatever he is now. The f- but, he uh, made the frog gay, frogs gay, bro. But anyway, like there was like some of the conspiratorial kind of like radio shows I would listen to, they often were saying, like, oh, society's gonna collapse in Y2K and you gotta make sure you have your gun and your like <laughs> bag of gold and you know, you're like, <laughs> stocked up. Yeah, people yeah. did stock up. People would have like their like Y2K bunkers and this kind of thing because they thought that like civilization was going to collapse that'd be the perch Mm -hmm. you know which would also objectively i think the perch would be cool if that was a real thing dude just you would get destroyed no no dude you would get essayed and then killed no i would start a call for the purge bro okay (laughs) 
<laughs> well, <whatever>. <laughs> the point is it didn't happen but it was like a big deal at the time but but anyway the the point is is that you know going back to what you said before like biggest difference is just that my era like the era when i was young and even you know when i was your guys age just is so much more technologically primitive compared to the time yeah. you guys inhabit so it's like it's so hard for me to imagine what high school would be like having phones having social media like being able to like talk to your friends when you're not in school anymore and like not only talk to your friends, but like see pictures of them and their social lives. And like, you're, you're yeah. aware of like parties you missed out on because you can see pictures of those parties. Every time, yeah. every Friday, y'all, every Friday. The FOMO, right? Like yeah. that was just not like you'd hear, I guess like people would talk about things, but it's like not being sort of subjected to that kind of relentless kind of like social media, you know, pressure and you know, this kind of stuff. Like it's, it's, it's hard to relate to and it, it kind of makes me a little I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. Like I'm glad that I had a break from high school life when I got home. Whereas I think the kids today, like high school life follows them home. It's in their phone all the time. Yeah. You know, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram, it's everywhere, right? I think it's for me, it's hard to relate to the FOMO thing, not necessarily because I was getting invited to the parties. Mm -hmm. But I just like never wanted to go. Like I wanted to go home and play games. Yeah. So when I would see like First of all, we didn't. Our high school was not very partyish, and I'll say that. So we had like one group of yeah. partiers, and yeah. then that was it. But it's like, for me, I don't. I understand the fact that you know you're always connected, and I think there's so many benefits. Like I get to call this guy. Hey, you want to hang hang out? What would you do? Mm. Like you send a like, do we just show up to people's houses? No, you have to send them like an owl. Yeah, like JJ had to send people owls. Yeah, you just want to hang out with somebody. How did you did you just go to their house? Well, no, people would like just tell you, like they'd say, "Oh, like there's gonna be a party at." Did David's you have house. a? Did you have a pager? <laughs> I didn't have a pager. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess though that like you'd have to, you'd have to like I guess carpool with people who would like know where the house was and stuff like that. I mean, like that's the thing that I was so like I lived in Japan. Oh uh, yeah, when I was in in 2008. Right when I had graduated, from just high around school. my Y two K. Wait, did you get hit with the Japanese earthquake? When was that? No, that actually happened like right after I left. Dude, so it was very died. convenient. Um, but no, it's like I was. So I was like rereading my Japanese journal because, like, when I was in Japan, you have a kept, Japanese journal. Well, I kept like so hit, I kept no. I kept like <laughs> shut up. Come I kept on. like <laughs> I kept like notes of what I was doing when I was in Japan when I lived there in two thousand eight, two thousand and nine, and then I was reading it recently, rereading it. And it was just remarkable to me, like how often I would have entries that would be like, I tried to find this store that like somebody told me about, but I couldn't find it. So I was just kind of like wandering around for hours. And then I got lost and couldn't find my way home because like there was no phones. Right. So like I, there was no GPS, like there was no way to just kind of like oh, track so you just things. Can you imagine that? I know. I would cry. It feels so primitive now because like, obviously like I'm very used to the modern world yeah. and it's like, I'm as dependent on the phone now and the Apple google maps and all this as anyone else but it's just weird to me to imagine that there was a time in my life where i didn't have any of this stuff and i just kind of had to like figure it out like i just people would just give me vague instructions on how to get to things or i'd have to like write down like okay take a left turn at you know this street and then go for you three were your own gps i was my own gps right i literally can't imagine living like that like i, I would, can't grasp i would that. never We've go never anywhere because i would be afraid of being lost actually you one would. time i was in the car with my mom i think i was like eight yeah and my mom was driving and this is we were in like the shitty toyota at the time like yes. it was my mom's first car like it was like 20 years old mm -hmm. i'm not kidding right? it was the shittiest toyota it made like a little bit of weird noises but no, it's like yeah. whatever like it's like my seatbelt won't work so my mom would just do this <laughs> oh, like yeah. you know so if you're about to crash like oh. yeah and she just does that right but um one time she we're driving she just starts tearing up and i'm like are you okay Whoa. like i was like seven at the time she's like yeah i'm lost i don't know where we're going I'm like, okay, this is fucking sucks. And then we're like trying to find our way for like an hour, two hours. So it's scary. And you'd you'd have to just like I remember like going on trips with my my parents and they would like, you know, you'd have to go to like a gas station and like ask someone for directions yeah, right. and like hope that you could remember what they said or like write it down or like look at these terrible like paper maps that you would keep in the club compartment. And I don't know. It's just like I'm I think every generation feels this way to some degree. But I feel like I'm glad that I grew up at a time sort of before the computers sort of took over everything. So yeah. like I can remember kind of like the primitive times while also being having been young enough that I could like learn how to use all the technology without it seeming 
you know, cause like my parents' yeah. generation, I think that they're still kind of intimidated by the technology. Like it feels new because I don't want to send an email. I try to teach my grandma how to use an iPad. Yeah. Shit's fucking impossible. Yeah. Like I yeah. can't teach her how to use Here's an iPad. The, I think we like barely made the cutoff because yeah. when we were like five, we didn't have any of these phones. I got my iPads. first phone when I think I was 12, yeah. maybe. Oh yeah. Like yeah. the kids, like the iPad kids are bad now, JJ. Yeah. They're so yeah. bad. Like yeah. they'll be in the movie theaters iPad, iPad, like Coco Melon. I'm like, bro, I'm trying to watch Hunger Games right no, now. No, yeah, like, what's your take on that? I feel like, I feel like we're it's fucked. Bad. I feel like the next because we ba- barely made it. Yeah, because yeah. when we were we we actually went outside mm-hmm. when we yeah. were kids. We I I I only went outside yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah, well, yeah. So it's like your generation, and this is what I mean. It's like every generation kind of feels like that they were born at the perfect time. Like they it's feel true. like that they were born at like a like a key kind of like a cutoff period, right? Yeah, and it's true. It's like you guys obviously had phones when you were much younger than I was. But at the same time, like you weren't like given a phone in the cradle the way that yeah, the children yeah, today are. Yeah. And it's tough because, you know, it's like I'm at an age now where a lot of my friends have children. And a thing that they often say is like when they have kids, they're like very righteous. It's like, well, I'm not going to have any screens for my kid until they're like, you know, 15 mm-hmm. or whatever. But then it's like the kid is cre- screaming in the backseat of the car and it's driving you nuts. And you realize just how easy it is to shut them up by just handing them the phone or the iPad. Yeah. And that becomes a temptation that's very hard to resist. Well, it's, it's it's like a crutch. It's a parental yeah. crutch. Also, raising a kid, hardest fucking it thing is, ever. I feel so bad for my but mom. I, I so do that sorry, with but... my brain. Like, if I have demons in my head, I'm like, uh-huh. iPad, iPad, yeah. iPad, TikTok. Yeah. But, no. like, it's a crutch that I think parents rely on reasonably. Yeah, and it's just like... And we can't be too judgmental because... Like, the only reason why earlier generations didn't raise their kids that way was because they just didn't have the technology. Like, I was the kind of, I'm the kind of guy to leave my kid in the hot car by accident. Like, I'm that kind of guy, right? Like, I would be an awful fucking parent. So I totally get why just ending an iPad to shut them the fuck up is great, right? But then you're crying in the airplane, like, but then, yeah, choke them out, right? But then it leads to this problem when they're like 15. And they're like, oh, I'm itchy for ting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And I mean, it's, I mean, I feel that way. Like, I feel like I'm as addicted to the, oh no, to the phone. What's your TikTok screen, screen? time? I don't use TikTok. But what do you use? Like, so you, you can't be addicted unless you use TikTok. No. That's no, like, J- JJ no. would use like iFunny, bro. <laughs> <laughs> JJ would use <laughs> iFunny, bro. He would go on r slash funny memes, bro. <laughs> that's what, that's like what you would use. Is that what you use? No, no she it's would like, Google I use, memes. I use like, I use like Instagram too much. I use like Twitter too much. Like those Ooh, are, oh, you Twitter. would used. Someone Max. commented on the last episode of Beer Sauce, the uh, suppressing emotion is not gas. Uh-huh. I don't know when this will come out, but um, They're like, someone was Twitter? like, are you guys on Twitter? And I replied, I was like, fuck, no, we're not on Twitter, bro. Gen Z view Twitter as sort of like this old person thing. Mm, no, it's no, like that's a Facebook. toxic, Facebook, toxic yeah. cesspool. Well, the thing is, is your side of Twitter might be different but like if well, just, are you, i feel it, I'm a, I, i'd assume you're on the political side of twitter yeah, i feel yeah. like that's the worst yeah, side of twitter. it's it like bad. yeah it's like a toxic just waste of people's opinions yeah. and i'm trying to like withdraw actually I, i'm doing a bit of a, a, a twitter detox Ooh. right now Ooh. let's go where it's like me and, and my friend like we've sort of made mutual agreement that we're gonna like not use twitter for like a month and i did that previously with him like we did a mutual kind of like t- uh, twitter withdrawal and then you know when the thing ended i went back on tiktok or back on twitter and i just kind of like this isn't worth it like i don't i don't i'm not enjoying this experience and so (laughs) withdrawing from it feels good it feels like i don't know it feels Mm -hmm. like it's better for my mental health and i used to think like oh if i'm not using twitter all the time i'm gonna like miss the important like political yeah you're gonna miss out on what's going on but it's like instead of like getting my news from twitter i'm now just like reading the newspaper more and like listening to podcasts and the newspaper is dying well not the newspaper not like the physical newspaper but like you know newspaper websites the daily mail or something cnbc yeah, Washington Post. Wait, JJ, Post, yeah. could I could I ask you one more Gen Z slang yeah, word? Do. Okay, we had like three more, but I'm just gonna ask you the last one. Um, it's popping bees. Do you know what that is? No, I don't know what that is. You want us to use it in the sentence? It's like, hmm, if I walk into your house, and yeah. I'm like, what's that smell? And then he'll be like, and then I'm, I'm like, it kind of smells like popping bees. And then w- w- ask me what Poppin' Bees is. What, what is it? What's Poppin' Bees? Welcome back to Beer Sauce. My name is my name is Nicholas Possibot. Hello, friends. My name is D R I K Z H U Derek Zoo. And today we are joined with JJ McCullough. Yeah, that intro was for we an dude, hour in, but dude, we did it, dude. 
an for hour our in. notes, for our notes, we had slang game as the first one. We thought that would take five minutes. Uh-huh. Like I had to this cut out happening. the last three words because it took fifty minutes to do the slang game because we got <laughs> no, sidetracked but it's, so that's hard. That's how it is. That's, that's how good. it is. That's a podcast. It's yeah. the conversation flowing naturally. Yeah, but if oh. like I just had to do the intro because I looked at the time, I'm like, oh yeah, we've got fifty three minutes, bro. Like I got. Well, we got to restart the cameras. We... But I have a Y two K theory. Okay. Okay. It's gonna be why. I don't know. I just have a theory. What's okay. your theory? Is it a game theory? What's game map pack? No, 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 no. <laughs> so my theory is our Y2K for our generation is going to yeah. be like Tesla is going to get like hacked. Uh-huh. And everyone's going to be like, oh my God, like they're going to take my autopilot. Yeah. And oh, and they're going to turn into, into a like car. a Transformers. Yeah. Well, they're going to be like, they're going to take my autopilot and yeah, like yeah. drive me off like the highway. Yeah. And I'll die. And then everybody's going to avoid Tesla. And then their stock's going to crash. And then the S&P 500 is going to crash. And we're going to hit a recession. Uh-huh. Just because somebody hacked a Tesla. Okay. I mean, but the thing is, this is that, like, Y2K was like an organized campaign. Like, it was something that oh. was, like, always in the newspaper. You know, President Clinton was talking about it all the time on TV. Like, it was, it was not just kind of like a crank theory of something that could go wrong. It was like a very plausible theory yeah. of what could go wrong, this is and was plausible. taking no, but it was like it was it was it was like the big story of 1999. Like it was impossible to avoid because all of the important people about in the world were just talking about it all the time, right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I it's very hard to imagine. Like COVID kind of had a similar vibe to Y2K. Like COVID was obviously much when more. It first started. COVID was much more serious, but. And like imposed a greater zero service. toilet paper. Like in the, in the sense, I was I was using my hand for that toilet paper. Yeah, like why would you hoard toilet paper? <laughs> like I was... I literally just went I just went. Yeah, okay, we don't we it, don't bro. need to hear that. <laughs> my fault, JJ. My fault, JJ. JJ my bad. <laughs> but it was like it was comparable in the sense that like it was a bit of a kind of like moral panic, and authority figures were telling us to take it seriously. It just as COVID was right. Mm. I mean, COVID obviously lasted longer and imposed much more sort of hardship on on people. But like that was, I think Y two K. Well, I mean, you know, like nine eleven and stuff like that. Like, yeah, that happened back to back. That's crazy. Where were you on nine yeah, eleven? I doing? was in my last year of high school on nine eleven. Yeah, because everybody's like, I remember exactly. I remember it. I, I mean, it was a very vivid memory. I was like, I don't know how old I was. I was in the twelfth grade, so I was like 18, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was it was very. I mean, a whole video about it. You know, it was like it was a very serious day. Like it, it's it's not. Where a, were you when you found out though? I like, was in the car because. Um, we were, I remember I was very, I, I was very sick that day. Like I was like clogged up. Like, your, my body was your body knew, your body knew. Well, it's like, normally what I would do is I would like check the news on the internet that morning before I would go to high school. Like I would load up CNN.com mm-hmm. and sort of see what was new. Cause I, even then I was sort of like getting pretty into the news and politics and things. And because I was feeling so shitty that morning, I didn't do it. So I got into the car with my mom and my sister and she was going to drive us to school. And I forget like my sister or somebody like brought up, it's like, oh, there's something like crazy going on in the news. And so like we turn on the radio in the car and then we kind of hear the announcement about it. And then when I get to high school, uh, we used to have a big TV in the cafeteria and then they had it on CNN and there was like a big crowd of students watching it. And that's when I sort of saw the the footage of the the planes hitting the towers and all that. Yeah. So it was, and it was like, it was a very grim and very sober and very dark day. And, you know, it was for weeks you know long afterwards yeah. and then of course there was the war in afghanistan and you know and then the war in iraq and it was just like it was just a very bleak like very dark and depressing and, and very frightening time and it was like a very sort of somber cloud that uh sort of hung over politics for for many years in in this country and in the world you right? think um who's the president bush george w you bush, think yeah. uh you think you inside knew? job no. you think that she you was like inside knew? job you know no. what the, you know the meme jet fuel can't melt steel yeah, beams? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's like, but it's like that was that whole sort of like crankish stuff came out very quickly like yeah. i remember uh i remember like even when i was in high school like days afterwards people were already sharing like conspiratorial memes yeah. there's like i remember there was this like memes al- are always a thing <laughs> there, was this, there was like i mean they weren't quite like memes like they are today but like people would like share like graphics and stuff like i remember i forget what they were called but i remember like there was this rap album cover that like had a cover where it showed like the twin towers exploding and i remember like a lot Loaded of people were like cover it was like i don't know some, it was like it was, the simpsons <laughs> it was like a minor like rap band but i remember like people in high school being like oh have you seen this like this band like predicted it was going to happen <laughs> and i remember you know like wingdings like the font wingdings wingdings no. wingdings still exists it's like a font that is just like symbols 
And I remember, oh, okay, yeah. And I remember that there, there was like something that you could type in. It was something like 9 11 or September 11 or something. But like when you typed it in, like through a coincidence, it made like the wing ding of like a, a plane <laughs> and like fire and like a no star shot. of David and a thumbs <laughs> up. And, and it's like people were like, oh, Microsoft. The knew. Jewish people did it. Yeah, it was just like, but it was like all this kind of stuff, right? So it's like now it's like the young people are kind of like rediscovering like these 20 year old memes <laughs> yeah, and like re-adopting them me. in a kind of like ironic kind of kitschy way. Yeah. But it's like, at the time, it was just like, it was just a very serious time. Like it was a very scary <laughs> you thing. You know a video I saw on TikTok like last month? What? I saw 9-11 some, meme. I saw a 9-11 meme of the plane hitting into the building, but to a beat drop. So it was like oh Fred God. again, they were playing like Skrillex. Oh, no. And then the plane just went, and then the beat dropped. I, I, I was like, that's fucking crazy. See, like, to me, that whole day and all that stuff is just, like, really upsetting. And it's like, I can't even, like, watch the footage of the plane hitting the building because, like, I find it just too upsetting. Like, like I wasn't even, I was yeah, in my we mom's womb, yeah. bro. I was in my mom's womb. Here's a life hack. Out. If you want to last longer in bed, think of 9 Think about 9-11. Uh, like, like, you actually last longer. Don't, don't make jokes. <laughs> It's in very bad taste. You know, thousands, <laughs> thousands of people died. Pete, Pete Davidson's father died. Yeah, he did. You know? He did. That's how did you know? Everybody knows that. That's like a very famous thing about him. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I you're thought certified. That was like, we gotta restart the cameras now. Oh shit. Movie recording stop. Oh god, I have to pee anyways. Uh, hello everyone, Nico here with a quick editor's note. Uh, when we come back from pee break, the mics just didn't pick up any sound for like five or ten minutes. Uh, but basically, we just started talking about the JFK assassination and kind of the memes surrounding that whole event. Um, hopefully, you guys don't feel too lost or anything. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for listening. Jack. That's yeah, very Jack. Cool. Like, people said Swole. that in my day. Swole. Yeah. Yeah. Is the microphone <laughs> working? My my bars aren't moving. Hmm? My bar, like the bars on the mic aren't moving. Are they moving? Oh, it's here. It's here. It's here. Okay, okay gas. Is <laughs> what we're talking about? JFK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I think the assassination was just gaseous. Well, people Funny liked time. JFK, right? People did. He was very, it would be like if Obama was shot, right? People love Obama. Oh, people if Obama him. was shot, I would be cheesed a little bit. Yeah. But it's like, you it's know, like, Kennedy had only been in office for two years and there was still like a lot of promise yeah, and yeah. he was, you know, young and charismatic and people liked him. And so when he was gunned down, like that was sort of seen as the end of an era, like a very promising moment for America was kind of cut short. This young progressive, you know, president in the 60s was murdered and then you know things went pretty sour you know after kennedy was shot the war mm -hmm. in vietnam escalated you know lots of kids were drafted to go fight there you know there was a lot of terrorism in america unrest you know politics became much more polarized and tense and coarse and so a lot of people particularly of my parents generation like when kennedy was murdered it was sort of seen as like the beginning of the end like you know there was the era of sort of hope and optimism that came after yeah. World War II, you know, 1945 to like 1962 is kind of like the golden era of America. <laughs> the boomers. <clears throat> but, uh, and you know, like 9-11, I think is in some ways functions in a similar way to my generation, right? Was because like the 80s and 90s were an era of sort of peace and prosperity. You know, Steve, Stephen Harper. <laughs> Stephen Harper was elected in 2006. That was I remember. Him. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know anything about politics. No, no, no. It was like like the 80s. You know, was Ronald Reagan and Brian Mulroney, and then the 90s were Bill Clinton and uh, and Jean Chrétien in this country. And it's like that was what they called the era of peace and prosperity. Like the economic growth was very good. People, you know, lived very comfortably. You know, I lived very comfortably. Like I have good Ooh. memories of that. Like it was a comfortable. Everyone had their Cadillac or what's that car that everybody had? The what? What's Black that, Pontiac. What's that car that everybody had that it was like the long one? And it was like the American Dream car. I, I don't know. Oh, fuck. Maybe it's only in Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> Fallout in Vegas? Yeah. yeah. No. But it's like, you know, it's like this is when, like, you know, people started getting computers for the first time. People, yeah. everybody had a color TV. You Tetris, know? Tetris. Yeah, Tetris, I yeah. guess. <laughs> but it's like, no, yeah, you had like video games for the first time. Like, there was just like a lot of like these kind of consumer luxuries that every middle class family now had in the 80s and 90s. You know, when people were going to better schools, they had nicer clothes, there was more restaurants to go to. Like, it was a real era of prosperity in the same way that like the 1945 to 1962 era were sort of like that. Mm -hmm. But then 9 11 in 2001, you know, suddenly now life is no longer consumed by these kind of positive things. You know, it's now consumed by talk of war and terrorism and, you know, politics becomes much more tense and there's lots of protests and people fighting against each other and this kind of stuff. And so it's, uh, people sometimes say that the, 
the election of Donald Trump was a kind of comparable thing for some of the younger generation because like Obama was regarded very positively. Yes, like yeah. and he was an optimistic, cool president that people liked and felt positive about. And then, you know, Donald Trump was elected in a kind of shock upset. And that sort of traumatizes a lot of, I think, younger people, especially and makes yeah. politics seem again, like more coarse, more polarized, more dark and upsetting. And people are fighting and yelling at each other more and this kind of stuff. And so I think every, every generation kind of has like an arc, like there's a positive, there's a kind of a, an era of optimism followed hey, by, we have like of... a prosperity arc in our lives. No, we just, like, like, has it happened? We're like, everything's just up for everybody. Well, the, the thing is, is like, like, JJ, what, what's your thoughts on this? I've never voted before. Uh -huh. yeah, I've, I've never voted before. I have no desire to vote. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's. Cause as a, like a political, like you yeah. surround your life in the political space, you're literally a political commentator. Yeah. Like that must like bug you a bit. I don't know. It it bothers me maybe a little bit less. Which I totally understand. Well, some people are like, wow, that's like a deal breaker. Yeah, I know. Some people, I, I don't know. For some reason, like that has never stuck with me in the way that it, it bothers some people. Like some yeah. people I agree are like very triggering. Like there have been elections that I haven't voted in. And when I've mentioned that casually, like some people are like so offended to hear that. But to me, it's like, I think it's important that we live in a democracy and I think democracy is important and we should all be very grateful for that. But at the same time, like if people don't feel informed enough then I don't think it's the end of the world if they don't participate. I mean, that's the reason why I don't vote yeah. is like, yeah. like I kind of want to vote with the Green Party just because I like the color green, y'all. No, <laughs> like that, but that would be the reason exactly. why I voted for so the Green Party. So it's more socially responsible for him to just not do yeah. it. Like, yeah, I would vote it, for the Green Party just because this guy's wearing green. <laughs> I guess what I would sort of say is that I think that it's fine to vote if you don't feel sufficiently informed. Yeah, cast that's an informed reason, ballot, yeah. But at the same time, I also think that we should aspire to become more informed because I think that democracy only works when we have, you know, most people participating, right? Yeah. And so like, if you don't know, that's fine in the short term, but in the long term, you should aspire to be You know informed. what? 2024 is Derek's vulnerability yeah, we year. We've voted. When's the next election, election voting bro? year? When's the next, next election? Next election is in 2025. Oh, shit. Yo. Okay, well, 2025, 2025 voting year. Brain rot is ending yeah. okay. next year, y'all. Yeah. Well, the thing is, what percentage of voters do you think just do like want they see a TikTok and they're like yeah. this is who I'm voting for. Yeah. You right. Know, it's it's true. Like a lot of people do vote for for stupid reasons. And it, it's particularly these days, like there's a lot of talk now that people vote more for how parties and politicians make them feel than and how they are on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. like the, the the vibes, right? Well like, it's 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 chill it, vibes. I mean, like no matter what, you can have all these fucking statistics and data, but what people at the end of the day are gonna relate to is like, emotion. Jag yeah. just posted connect. a meme like yeah. that guy's I, like, I, oh, I, I like Jag Meat because he like plays among us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I, I know, and, I, and, and this is like one of the arguments now is that like people have always kind of suspected that that's what politics is actually about. It's about vibes, but this is the first time that you're starting to see politicians. Well, it's popularity. That, it's a popularity. Well, context. yeah. And it's like, the point is, is that like now a lot of politicians are just leaning into that. Like yeah. they're not even trying to pretend that they're serious about like running the country or that they have like ideas and proposals and policies and this kind of thing. It's more just like, I give off the kind of vibes you like vote for me, you know, yeah. And this is like an expression of like your identity or your feelings or your emotions. And that's good enough, right? Like Trump is that way. Jagmeet is that way. I think even Justin Trudeau to a large extent is that way. AOC. Yeah, AOC. I think AOC even Obama, you know, I think that Obama had a lot of that as well, right? Where it's just kind of like you're voting. And as well, like this happens as politics, like we become a more sort of politicized society in some ways. But like politics is much more like you're part of your identity. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a good person and I vote for this party. Yeah I, I, yeah, I feel like, I mean, I feel like you're like right, dead on there. Like mm -hmm. you, like you could get flamed if you yeah. have like, oh the yeah, wrong well, we know people yeah. that wouldn't even be friends with people of like another, like yeah. political like yeah. opinion. Yeah. And it's like, to me, that is crazy mm -hmm. because yeah. that. Like for me in my head, that's not a d very big defining trait for me. Mm. So I couldn't imagine not being friends with somebody solely because like, oh, they want economic reform. Yeah. Like, but it's not, but it, it probably wouldn't even be about that kind of yeah. policy sort of thing, right? It's just kind of like, you like the conservatives, but they're evil. And oh, they're and you're evil. racist. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's a lot of politics getting bound up in these kind of sort of social cleavages in society. Cleavage. Right? I can never use this word. Like anybody under anybody under like thirty, well, bro. Or... You said cleavage, Ooh, bro. Cleavage, a cleavage is like a divide. <laughs> Yo, JJ, you know what that is? No. You know what he's doing? He doesn't no. do that. Yeah, he does it. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, I mean, I paid eight dollars for a drink at Cineplex, so that Pierre vote is looking gas right <laughs> now, bro. That's like too much money for a Coke. Yeah, sure. like suck my dick. There's no way I just paid. You know that what? You know what? You know what Pierre calls that? He calls that the just inflation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually but see that's like a good it's like a meme like he literally created a meme yeah so it's he's funny oh my god that's how he gets the gen z's the like yeah uh, the memes because my mom works at tnt yeah and i remember justin he wanted the chinese votes who would go to all like the tnt like yeah. markets and talk to like the chinese people like yeah. here's a sticker like hey y'all yeah. Yeah. a sticker <laughs> a sticker of what I don't know my face, or but that's but like like that's a lot of like the kind of the vibe space politics as well. Is yeah. that like the politician, you know, just kind of comes off as a nice guy, and then you vote for him on that. It's like I don't know if he's actually going to do anything that's going to help my life in any way, but yeah. you know, he made the effort to like you know smile at me and shake my hand, mm. and so oh, and he's at the nice... pride parade. Yeah, exactly. Like all this kind of stuff, right? Like I mean, like to some extent, this has always been part of politics. But what a lot of people would say is like it's just a much bigger part of politics now because again. Like social media makes this kind yeah. of stuff a lot easier. Like it's just so much easier for a politician to communicate like images of themselves, like craft, uh, you know, in the same way that we all do this on social media, we're all crafting like a perfect yeah. brand, like a, a, a kind of like curated, a yeah, curated yeah, like yeah. image of, of, of the person that we want to <clears> be in the eyes of others. Right. So that's like, I want to be a mysterious Korean man. Uh -huh. You know, that'd be my thing. If I wanted to politics, to be poli yeah. you want to be a mysterious people are going to vote. Actually, people will Ooh. people now will vote for a mysterious Korean man. Yeah, probably. And I would like, no, actually, no, my, what would my thing? I'd actually try to be really funny. I, yeah. And I would play like game. I would go on Twitch and I'd play games with the streamers. Yes. I would even have an OnlyFans, like oh, yeah. politician with only, only prime minister with an OnlyFans. Oh my so God. That would cater to people. I would just do it for the... Because I remember when Kanye ran. Was that even real? It was real. Yeah. Did Kanye actually run? He did. He ran for president. He got, you know, a few thousand votes. <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. Actually, I've been wanting to make a... Uh, this actually reminds me. I want to make a video about this. Maybe I'll make it for next week. <gasps> like, just talking about, like... Like, in any given election, like, tons of people run for president. It's not just, you know, the two big candidates. There's always a ton of smaller candidates. And I think it would be fun to make a video just talking about all the other randos. If you run, I will actually vote for you. I'm not trolling. Dude, I will vote for you, too. Oh, well, thank you. I feel you. like you would be a fantastic president, bro. And then all our fans can vote for you. Yeah. Yeah, would you, you guys vote for this you man? You at least have, like, 5K people voting oh, for you wow. right now. You know, that's... You'd have more than Kanye. Maybe that would be more than Kanye. Yeah, I, yeah, I want to... I want, But I want to, like, look and, and see, like, how many votes Kanye got and, like, where they were like if there's any parts of the of america that voted for chicago kanye in particular illinois yeah <laughs> i don't know sure. there was this there was this whole i remember when like kanye was running in 2020 there was like some people just like mm, will this split the black vote you know in some ways it was very <laughs> it, it was very condescending because yeah. like mm, the blacks they'll all vote for this like, <laughs> famous black musician <laughs> yeah. right and it he was made like graduation y'all come yeah. on guys he made he made champion or whatever but it was it was very is. condescending because it was this kind of idea that like you know black people will just vote for any random black celebrity right as opposed to you mm -hmm. know that they're voting their interests or because of policy things and all that. So yeah, Kanye's candidacy did not take off because people, <laughs> and I think a lot, a lot of it too was in the same sort of kind of like racist condescending way was that I think a lot of the sort of the right wingers wanted Kanye to run because there was a thinking, you know, black voters in America mostly vote for Democrats. Oh, that's true. So if you get like a guy that will split the black vote, you know, that helps Trump. So, but that didn't happen because that's a very dumb theory of <laughs> politics. So, you know, I really, when I was in high school, I really, really, really liked Ben Shapiro. Like, Oh, I, what did you I like didn't even know him? this? Okay. So like, there's a, I think this is a, a, a man phase that happens a yeah. lot. To a lot I of did men. not I know your, of your generation. Yeah, yeah, I think absolutely. Like basically, when you grow up and it's like you're 13, 14, 15, 16, and you watch like H3H3 H3 and I Dubs, yeah. and you're like constant, you're like consistently hard Ring on the internet, and right. you're like SJW, like oh I hate them, right? Did and you, you hate SJWs? Well, I thought at the time I did, but like, uh, why did you hate them? Like, what did it mean to you? That's a good question because I don't know. I just was consuming this type of media. But, me, like, but like what I want to ask you is like yeah. when you were young, did you perceive that there was like too much political correctness? Yes. And yes. yeah. And, and how, did I, that, how did that manifest though in your life? Like, um, well, not necessarily. Well, I wasn't a social kid, but I would go yeah. on the internet. Yeah. And then, I mean, I would like call up like in like grade seven, like if I was getting bugged by like a girl, I'd be like, oh, you're a feminist. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. such a feminist. Yeah. You know, yeah, like you have, you're a blue haired feminist. Yeah. So like, I didn't even have these thoughts. Well, you weren't. But I did was, you feel like, did you feel like loop. that this was like a thing that like your teachers were pushing or no, no, the no, media no. was pushing? I had like, like well, I was like, 
on 4chan at like 12. Oh, really? But see, so. like, the, my, my point is, is that like Ben Shapiro, 4chan, like all these kind of like right wing yeah. people, like they complain about society, right? Yeah. Like they say, oh, there's too many feminists. There's too much LGBT stuff. There's too much woke and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And I'm, what I'm saying is that like for those arguments to resonate with you i have to actually pre- see that yeah okay. and so did you see that kind of no. stuff when you were young so why Not did those really. arguments resonate with you i think then? i wanted to be edgy I think yeah you were, you like, were just an easily gaslighted. Like, i don't know if you child. remember the the, t- uh, the youtuber like leafy is here yeah i know of him yeah yeah so like there was just like an edgy sort of like uh culture going on yeah. on the internet at the time and i wanted to be part of that so bad yeah so i really like that like milo dude oh yeah yeah milo you know <laughs> um, yeah. i really like ben shapiro the stephen crowder oh yeah, like, yeah. changed my mind like, there's only two genders changed my mind. And literally, like, I didn't even know people that were LGBTs. And it wasn't even affecting me. But I was like, no, like, I can't have yeah, this I, in my I life. I don't know where these came. Like, obviously, I, I watch iDubs as well in mm-hmm. high school. It's kind of like an arc that every young man has to go through, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. where you do consume these, like, insanely, like, hateful kinds of content. Yeah. But, but iDubs was kind of the furthest I went. I never really went down this trail i really i really looked at it and i was like hmm this looks gaseous y'all but i never actually fully went down there because i didn't know this was like a thing it made me feel different from everybody else that's why i liked it this is this is very fascinating to hear right Mm. because this kind of goes and then look at him now y'all well no but i mean it's it's, (laughs) but it's it's interesting because kind of like you're sort of saying is that even if this kind of like social critique didn't really like resonate with you in mm-hmm. terms of being a useful critique of anything that you were seeing. Yeah. You were still found it compelling just because it was like edgy yeah. and you could tell it was like provocative and kind of naughty and this sort yeah. of thing. Right. And like that was attract what was attracting to you. I think also the hatred behind it. Cause I like had a lot of anger as a mm-hmm. kid. Mm-hmm. So like that was a way to get it out. Like I hate these people. Yeah. And I was like, I was like genuinely like a racist yeah. for like the couple of years when I was yeah. a kid. And those That's, views it's made a, it's a, it's a, it was an arc every young man went through yeah. in the day. And it made me feel better about myself at the time somehow. Mm. Mm. But I was like a kid, so I'm don't put don't cancel me, y'all. <laughs> and then but then so what kind of made you drift away from that sort of stuff? Like being in the presence of women, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> having a social life. Cause yes. a lot of my friends were the, on the internet. Yes. Like those are, I only, I purely internet. Yeah, I mean, you, you associate me. this kind of behavior, like with a lot of degenerosity, if that's the right word. Like being like a degenerate. Yeah. Like generosity. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know if that is even a word, but like you associate yeah. that behavior with exactly what Derek was doing. Like, I feel like you lined up perfectly with that stereotype. But hold on. So yeah. what are you saying? Like that you, it and makes then, sense that he did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then in terms of like what turns him off it eventually. I it's mean, just like be, now be, now he's like stepped out of the world yeah, yeah, yeah. Discord like, and he can like look around and shit. Because I used to use the word like normie, you yeah, know, yeah. as like a bad thing. Like, yo, you're such a normie. I think what happened to me was I went to high school and I started getting a little bit more social skills. I started getting more friends in real life. I started realizing like the internet persona doesn't work in real life. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes you if you do that in real life because there's no end on enemy. Like, mm-hmm. like I'm me. I couldn't do that. And then I started like, I felt the touch of the woman when I was 16. And I was like, yeah. wow, y'all, <laughs> this is what life is about. <laughs> no, that's, 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 that's very interesting to hear. And I mean, I, I do think that a lot of what helps de-radicalize young men is just interacting with reality yeah. and like reality does not match the caricature that I think some of these online right-wing people present uh, about reality, right? Yeah. Like these right-wing people say like, you know, all women are this way, all LGBT people are this way, all, yeah. you know, ethnic minorities are this way, you know? And then, you know, that works in the sheltered world of the internet. Those arguments sound persuasive because they're providing all of the evidence. But the second you sort of step out of that kind of cloistered little world and see, like get to actually know these sorts of people and you're like, oh, they're not that bad. They don't yeah. seem like this kind of like- They're grotesque. just normal human beings. Yeah, and exactly. everybody's just trying their best and, you know, and people just want basic- decency you know they just want to be treated well not everybody's like this shrill nagging harpy of the yeah sort, and you then know? you realize that you were the annoying one mm. right and that's like wow i because being a normie was like so like it felt like that was the wrong thing to do yeah and then i'm like wow wait hold on. you had to go so loser. far down that rabbit hole yeah. to be able to look up that and was, be like holy shit i have a long yeah, ways to go yeah, that was an incel like you know any incels jj oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, maybe not so much these days, but like I've I've had friends that I think were kind of like on the incel arc. Oh God! And oh, God. Uh, you know, because 
I mean, it was, it was, I mean, it was like, it was less a part of my generation than it was of your generation. Yeah. But like, even when I was in university, like some of this stuff was starting to arise and like, you know, there, you know, guys that are kind of like, uh, not having a lot of luck with women and that kind yeah. of stuff. And they become very sort of self-conscious and depressed and, Definitely. you know, they kind of spiral, right? Like yeah. they, they start maybe like, you know, you start looking for tips on how to be better with women online and then some of that stuff starts pushing you in the direction of like more and more extreme forums that are positing sort of bleaker and bleaker yeah. kind of stuff and eventually it gets into like you know you get beyond the red pill and it's just like the black pill like, you know <laughs> yeah. where yeah, it's just like no... there's no hope like yeah. you should get plastic surgery or or you know just you know, like just the kind of crazy stuff that you end up getting fed or it's like only a fascist dictatorship will solve what they <laughs> No, yeah, you that's, know? I mean, that's what it is. I feel like I actually feel like there are like so many content creators that are actually like actively hurting our generation and the next one mm. to follow. Oh, like Mr. Tate. Yeah, like yeah, as an example, yeah, I mean, yeah. he's such a big, I actually, I think he, I don't know what he's doing these days. He kind of fell off. A little bit like beer sauce is up and he's down right now. <laughs> yeah, like I, he's in jail I swear we're something. more popular than him these days. Well, but I hope so. He's I swear like he kind of ruins some fucking people. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's it, like it it baffles me that he's as popular as he is because he just seems like a an idiot. Like I've seen him talk and he's just like his understanding of everything is just so shallow and he's so ignorant. But you know he has a certain charisma and a confidence. And I yeah. think that when you're young, any older person who speaks with confidence comes off as being very persuasive particularly when they like you <laughs> this guy. like oh, you man. like you but it's like particularly when you you come off as like here's like the secret knowledge that they don't want you to know this right? is how you get a ferrari yeah. <laughs> and i think that when you're young you're like insecure and the thought of like learning is very daunting it seems like a lot of work so yeah. if some guy comes along and says like yeah you don't need to learn all that just learn these couple big secrets and that's like all you need to know mm -hmm. i think that's very compelling right and it's why i think you see a lot of young people that fall for conspiracy theories and easy answers just because it seems like a shortcut to knowledge you know knowledge is very important to acquire but it's difficult it's a long difficult time-consuming slog to become knowledgeable and to become wise and you know young people just kind of want to get there as yeah. quick as possible we're brain jj you think we're brain rotted brain rotted yeah, yeah you know, like like because rot? i mean we we like how long have we known each other uh I don't like know, a few months <laughs> yeah like a few we months like, each other for like three months guys that's that's crazy huh? that's pretty crazy like what is your take on us do you think we're brain rotted we've like, made multiple 9-11 jokes yeah. multiple dick and titty <laughs> jokes in Cleavage. this episode what's your take but, but we're on camera you got to judge us off camera yeah yeah, yeah. True, true yeah true. i mean i think i think that you guys are are fine like i think that you're <laughs> we're fine <laughs> no i mean like you're you're you're, you're okay you're, like the thing is like you guys are curious and you're also kind of humble which i think are two very important variables in in a young person right <laughs> like you want young people that are kind of realistic and honest about the limits of their own knowledge and are kind of open about yeah. that sort of say like there's a lot of stuff i don't know i don't have all the answers the world is kind of weird and intimidating to me in some ways but i'm also curious it's scary and guys it is scary it's right? scary it's but scary. but you're also curious you also want to know you like uh connecting with older people which i think is very important you know i think yeah. that a lot older of people yeah jj you're a stallion bro <laughs> don't ever compare yourself to an old man again you a stallion no. bro but the point is like mean? you know having intergenerational friendships and relationships is very important i think mm -hmm. when you're young and i think you guys seem like you're interested in that yeah we really like are. you 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 uh seek out people that are older and have knowledge that you don't have because i'm in need of a father figure yeah, that's yeah. that missing role model <laughs> that's fine right you know but uh no i think i think you guys model a, a sort of healthful uh healthy uh sort of youthful disposition so i wouldn't be too worried about you guys mm. that's not really sitting well uh, that's, uh, <laughs> sounding like there's something more you want to say okay what, well, what do you rip, mean? Okay. rip it out what's something that's we could work on. Yeah. What's something as like young that? as young men coming into today's very or scary anybody world. listening. Yeah. yeah. But more towards like us. a critique of our generation, which is valid because I mean, just like every other generation, we're flawed. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. such a flawed human being. It's yeah. insane, y'all. Like, like what what is advice you could like, give to stop me? Stop using potty talk. Well, yeah. I mean, I think, I think that like my generation, when criticizing sort of like your generation, sometimes gets a bit exhausted with just like the sheer 
levels of like irony and like sarcasm and just like joking the silly vibe just like the silliness We're too silly guys which is which is like i mean they sometimes what is it like uh meta meta irony or something they call it which is like this or kind like of meta humor or something well it's, it's like this kind of like disposition where it's like you're always acting silly and you're always saying goofy things and part of it is like you don't even really like you're doing it as a way to kind of like mask what you believe right and so it's like I don't know what I believe. I don't know what I feel. So I'm just going to kind of just say any old thing all the time. Yeah. And about it. Well, I feel like, know? I feel like it's like, it's like, I don't want to think about what's going on. Yeah. Because what's going on is awful. Yeah. Why would I want to fucking think about that all the time? Yeah. Right. So like, that's why I like, that's why Derek goes, <laughs> motorboat. Also, because it's also, better than thinking about 9-11. But it's also because like, you're unsure of yourself and like, rather than work on gaining more knowledge and becoming more confident, you just can retreat endlessly into like humor and sarcasm. Yeah. No, no, no. Like just a disposition. <laughs> coping, kind of like humor guys. Can cope yeah. Humor thing. can be a cope. Like irreverence can be a cope. Being silly all the time can be a cope. And it can be like a substitution for, for growing and for becoming yeah. more knowledgeable yeah. and becoming more confident. I think it's very important that young men in particular learn how to build. We're getting their... called out, y'all. No, it, like, <laughs> young young guys, I think, have to learn how to build their self-confidence in a healthy, constructive way. Not in a kind of like shortcut mm. way, not in a toxic way, not in a way that's based around sort of uh, beating down other people, but in a way that's about like building yourself up through the acquisition of knowledge and meaningful relationships and building healthy communities and all this kind of stuff. We're actually doing that, though. We actually started this year. Mm -hmm. We yeah. this year we start telling each other we love each other. Oh, yeah, that's very nice. JJ, yeah. I love we just you. Started. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> is that it? Is you want to say anything back or? <laughs> yes, you're 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 great as well. <laughs> wow. When's the last time you told someone you love them, JJ? <laughs> Have you ever seen on? Uh... Oh. Reflected. On, uh, I've checked out for the rest of the episode, guys. This one's just on YouTube, guys. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> no, I I love you as well, Nicholas. Okay, you know what? That didn't sound <laughs> real, but I'll take what I can get. Yeah, Thank well, you. you know, yeah, I'm good. Let's move on. What were we talking about? When was the last time you said no, I love you to bro. somebody? I said I love you to people. You say no, I love you to like you your mom or bro. sister. Yeah, I don't probably say it enough to people because you should call it... them and say it right now. No, because <laughs> that's what we started doing. Yeah, because like I used to be this emotion, like invulnerable person that didn't yeah. even want to feel emotion. Yeah. And then, yeah, like how you said, I every time there was emotion, like, aha, joke have to be silly. Yeah, yeah. But like in the last episode, we talked about like we did this thing. It was like a bit. But I, we we told each other like what we appreciate about each other. And yeah. that was like awesome. Yeah. So being emotional is actually the best, y'all. JJ, you know what I appreciate about you? What? Is your openness to the next generation. Oh, it's such true. a good, you have such a fucking like, uh, you're so open to it when so many people aren't. Like my mom's like, fuck you and your yo-yo. Like, okay, <laughs> my yo-yo? Yeah, it's like my yo-yo is gas, my yo -yo? but you, you're, you're open to the idea of me and my yo-yo. Well, you know, it is something that is important to me as I get older. Like, I feel like you know, I don't have children. You gotta, you gotta keep up, you know? Well, no, it's like... It's you should like, adopt a kid. But it's like, the thing is, it's like, as you get older, like, you understand why people have kids because it's like, you start to develop like this kind of like paternal energy, right? It's like, you start to care more about like young people and like you, when you see young people, like you have this like, this 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 instinct to like take care of them and help them and that kind of stuff. Is that why? Oh my god! Because DJ brings us snacks whenever we go oh. visit him in his office. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, okay, what what we should play a uh, football don't play catch well, do you want kids i don't know i mean i'm kind of getting old now where it's like i'm stallion so... you're a stallion uh, you should teach us how to bike ride a bike do yeah. you know how to bike jj i feel like you wouldn't know how to bike <laughs> you wouldn't bro <laughs> do you know how to bike I, I i know how to ride a bike i haven't ridden a bike in a long time do you guys know how to ride a bike yeah i know how to ride well, a bike I could, I could forget no. You can't forget how to ride a bike. I will forget. You will forget? Yeah. I always know how to ride a bike. Yeah. It's like walking. Yeah. But it's like, you know, it's it's sort of, you think of like, what do I have to offer young people? Like, what do young people need that I can offer them? And I feel like sometimes it's just being present, you know, just listening to them when they want to talk and offering like analysis. Like, I don't think that young people necessarily need like a lot of advice per se, because I think that like a lot of life is just figuring things out through yeah, trial exactly. and error. And, yeah. you know, and a lot of times like people aren't in a hurry to take other people's advice. You know, they want to take their own advice. 
Um, but you know, I think that you you model a sort of healthy disposition as an older person. You seem like a normal, well-adjusted, sort of sane, wise <laughs> older person, as opposed to some of these, like, you know, because it's like the Andrew Tates of the world and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, there's a lot of like young people to look up to them. But I also think that like if a lot of young people are honest with themselves, there's something about those kind of people that is a little off, you know? Oh yeah. Like they don't they don't seem like a fully together person or like a fully respectable like what do you person. mean you have nine wives andrew yeah yeah like they're just they're too odd right and you're gonna make them all come no way andrew. <laughs> no shot you are big lying, bro. Andrew. i can't even make one bro how am i supposed to make nine shit's impossible bro yes yes, yes. so you, you, <laughs> you yeah. i just ruined our reps for jj i'm sorry jj i'm sorry yeah, bro yeah. i didn't mean you it. instead want to sort of like exude a a sort of healthy you know even sort of like male kind of confidence and and sort of role model status that is because i i do think that like young people i i have faith that young people can ultimately like smell the bullshit right like when they're being fed like a lot of crap and easy answers and conspiracy theories and stuff yeah. like that i do think that like maybe that stuff is seductive when you first are exposed to it but the more you sort of come into contact with it the more i think you know your antenna starts to come up a bit and then the question is just that like when that kind of stuff starts to happen are there alternative sort of sources of information and other role models that you can turn yeah. to wait dude because i there is a really there good is a alternative good role, model. role model oh yeah yeah no like do you it's like this new up and coming one it's like this great role model jj it's like they have this instagram account but i'm like blanking on the name yeah yeah what, um, do you know it it's B E R S O S P O D C S T Beer Sauce Podcast on Instagram. <laughs> They're such good role models. You can't you can't have a role model that's your own generation. You what? have to have no. You have to you have to have intergenerational. Okay, then okay, check well, out then JJ, JJ McCullough on YouTube. <laughs> what type of content do you do would you say well, or no like, you describe his yeah, okay. what he makes i think jj makes videos surrounding i mean if you don't if you don't know jj but you know us that's like weird i feel like you would know jj but not know us you know well, what some I mean? people like just watch silly videos yeah though. but like i feel like jj the best way to sum up his content is like pop culture and an analysis Very of pop culture yeah. and an educational analysis of pop culture media and politics surrounding the current uh, political landscape. Well, that's very Ooh. flattering. Yeah, I mean, I try to, I try to make sort of like broadly educational content. I try to make content that helps people be more culturally, <coughs> uh, culturally literate, which is something that I think is very important. I'm not. I just got in. You know, 20 XL freshman cipher, JJ. I do not. <laughs> okay, <it's 'cause laughs> me too. I don't know what he has yeah, on culturally literate. Then. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's so like I think it's important that we have a sort of a healthy appreciation for our own society for our mm -hmm. culture for the civilization that we're part of you know for our history and our traditions and that kind of thing and in a healthy well-adjusted way i think it's important that we be able to communicate with the broadest diversity of people which i think requires having a lot of sort of common fact-based knowledge and so and i also do think that like i want to project a kind of like healthy uh image of a kind of older person who, you know, is sort of behaving in a way that's reasonable and thoughtful, you know, in alternative You're to the other. You're on point right there. Well, thank I you. Think you mm. I think you, yeah. like, you do do that. You kind of accomplish your goal. Like, I've said this to you before. If I'm you, yeah. in 20 years, I'm like, okay, let's fucking go. Yeah, I think <laughs> every time we speak, like, I... I'm like, my IQ is higher. Wow. Like, I gain brain cells. <laughs> well, that's like, you awesome. make me think. Yeah. If I'm on TikTok, reflect. I like lose brain cells, but then I gain it back when we oh, yeah. interact. Oh, that's very kind. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I hope in my own small way that I'm I'm doing that. So that's very flattering to hear, yeah. Derek. Yeah. Well, same. everybody watches videos. I like, you could, I mean, it is very educational. I learn a lot of stuff from you. I really do. Like, that's when great. we speak. Um, so if you have low IQ, you like got to check out JJ. And if you want to lower your IQ, then keep watching us. No, yeah, yeah. Keep watching. <laughs> stay here if you want to fucking keep destroying your brain. But JJ, thank, thank you for you so coming much. on. Thanks and for just having fucking, me. Thank you for rescheduling. I was sick last week oh, and we fine. couldn't record and I felt so bad. I was like, JJ, I'm so sorry. I'm so sick. Um, yeah, I love you. You don't have to say it back. It's Everyone, okay. if you watch this far, comment, JJ, come to the sauna with the boys. Is that is that your second show, the sauna show? No, <laughs> no. Yeah. that's just a that's, that's just a, a thing, thing we do. It's just it's a, a fun thing we do. Thing. Come to the sauna with us. It's nice. You 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 know. I'm I'm curious we, what swim trunks you own. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. I'm know. gonna go like I'm gonna go like. What is that? He's like, trying to check out your dong. Oh, like it's, it's not appropriate. <laughs> Beer sauce.